Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to the show. Today, we're actually going to be diving into one of the up and coming health plans here in Arizona, Bright Health, and what their uh, key model is as far as offering convenience to people uh, so that they can receive quick and quality health care. We'll be sitting down with David Wessling from Bright Health, and we'll actually be sitting down with Dispatch Urgent Care, uh, Rebecca Rocho, one of the main representatives here in Arizona. And we're going to be talking about uh, their healthcare delivery system, them coming to your home and how they provide care and some of the really awesome, unique things that they're doing to really kind of change up the game, especially in times like this. Uh, you're going to want to see this stuff for those of you who are looking for more convenient ways of receiving care. This is going to be completely for you. Stay tuned. Let's get at it. Well, welcome to the show. Hi, hey, hi, Brent. Hi, Rebecca. Hi, dude. <laughs> You're out of hibernation. I know it's it's kind of about it's about time. So I'm really excited you guys are here. I think we were kind of before we started rolling. We were talking about. I, I want to get your guys' opinion on this. Well, Rebecca, let's talk about you for just a second. So Rebecca, you're wow. with Dispatch Health, right? Yes, I am the market director for Dispatch Health. Okay, so I have a couple questions and. Tell me kind of a little bit about Dispatch first before I ask some of the questions I have. Okay. Who Dispatch Health really is, who you guys target and aim to serve, and why that's unique and special. Can you kind of share with me for a minute? Absolutely. I love to talk about it. So we are a mobile acute care provider. And what that means in like plain English is we provide mobile urgent care services. So we can do anything in your home environment or your senior living community that can be done in a standing urgent care environment with a little piece of the ER. Okay. So we were actually founded by an ER physician who did an 18 month pilot in Denver with EMS. So he rode along with the firefighters and paramedics on, on the, uh, on the ambulance and triaged right there in the field. So Whoa. that's kind of how we were born. So, so for example, so say, say, I don't know, just, just for a random example, someone by the name of, I don't know, like maybe Nicole or something. Okay. Right? Um, say a knife <laughs> hey, falls off, say, say a knife falls off the counter and right. she goes to catch it and she does. Right. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and that's a really great example because people don't usually think of of us in those terms, but that's exactly what we do. So we carry everything with us to take care of a wound. We can sew you up right there on scene. Because she just gutted her hand. Right. Uh, yeah. for, for those listening, Nicole is a, uh, she's a, a market rep for a company called Bright Health, who you'll be introduced to David here in just a minute um, from Bright Health. But Nicole also is one of David's counterparts. And she, the story was, was that a knife was falling and she thought, oh, I'm going to catch that knife. Right. That's something and, I and would do. And she succeeded. Most definitely. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? Right. Um, it, it was a Japanese knife and it had fallen off the counter. And Nicole had said, okay, well, I'm going to catch that knife. And right. she succeeded. Right. Right. So, I mean, in that, in that scenario. Right. So, in that scenario. So, just imagine you can't pick up the phone and call us and say, hey, we're going to be there. So, we take the time to... And for lack of a better uh, phrase, is we triage. So if people don't understand what that is, is you know the the, the potential patient's going to call us, and we call that a care request that comes in through the phone, and we're going to talk to them about what their chief complaint is, like what's going on with you. So we have to find out whether or not it's an appropriate visit for us. So we don't just you don't just call us and we come out. So we spend quite a bit of time finding out what's really going on because we see, you know, acute to emergent care. So we mm -hmm. want to make sure that, you know, the visit that we're coming out to see is an appropriate visit and that we can genuinely provide care. So in the event that someone is almost certain, well, let's say they've got like a compound fracture and their leg is surely broken. Yes. That's probably going to be one of those situations where you're going to be like, listen, you just need to go to the emergency room. Don't, right. don't wait for us. Correct. To count, and right? so and that, yeah, that, that happens right there at the time that yeah. they call, but something like stabilized a minor fracture, we carry arthroglass, so we would be able to do it right there on scene. So how quickly are you guys getting out to see people in situations So like in our current environment, depending on, so we're it's called risk stratification. So we're looking at the risk of, of the caller. So if it's something we feel is time sensitive and life threatening, we're going to tell them to go to the ER. But if it's something that we can see in our in our time frame for that day, we're on demand. So our time frames kind of shift and fluctuate because it all depends on how many calls we come have coming in for that day. So we don't really work in absolutes. So, so about three and a half hours wow, in today's so, current environment. So it sounds to me 
I mean, I think that you pretty much alluded to this, but I guess to put things simply, you guys are just an urgent care on wheels. We are. Almost an emergency department on wheels. We are. In extent. And, and I think that uh, this is just my perspective because convenience is really big. I mean, I'm under the impression right now, or I'm of the belief, I guess, that if you're not offering some level of convenience in the market right now, you're totally irrelevant. Right. And, and so I think right now, most people would believe that the last people that should be in an urgent care or in an emergency room are the people who can be treated otherwise right right i mean you don't exactly. want those people cluttering an emergency room right now with everything going on so True. COVID 19 all that stuff you know so we've got to drop that little bomb right there right, right? i mean try well, not that, to you know and that being said we've taken extreme precautions to make sure that our teams have all the appropriate ppe so they're they're completely outfitted from head to toe shoe boots gowns uh face ma n95 masks a face mask over that a bouffant cap, which is a hat, right? Goggles and gloves. And what's the website for? It is dispatchhealth.com. Dispatch and for Phoenix, you would just backslash Phoenix. Okay. So, and that shows you our entire service area in real time. Okay. Uh, we we'll have, probably put a link yeah. at the bottom of the video. When and we have five, too, five so. cars on the road right now. Holy cow. That's so, awesome. So yeah, most typically we'd have seven medical kits in those cars, but you know, we don't want to be a vector. So we have comprised, uh, you know, we've compressed and comprised our kits in a different way. So we're only taking two kits in with us when, okay. we, when, he, when we enter an environment and we're sanitizing before and after. Okay. Yeah. And, and so for on the Medicare side, for, for people who are listening that are on Medicare, right. I, I think your guys' primary relationship right now is with Bright Health, right? We see all Medicare plans. Oh, okay. Yeah. Although I will say that we were the first Medicare they were the first, plan yes. okay. with Dispatch they Health. Were, so and we have a great there are relationship. Little secret so, the so, they were. so tell us a little bit about why. Okay, so David, who who is Bright Health? What's the what's the convenience factor? Where it's what's the what's the shtick? With Bright and and then yeah. you know why you guys worked with Dispatch. I mean, you were the first ones, from what I understand. Right, so. we were, and yeah, you know, Bright Health has been around with the Medicare Advantage for three years now here in Maricopa County, and um, our, um, you know, let's call it uh, our business model, if you will, is one that we reach out to a medical group and they become our care partner. We're exclusive with them, and the reason why we do this is because we find that it's easier to change things and, and help uh, pivot to things when we need to. You know, if, if you are I hate a change. company that has multiple contracts, you almost have to dumb down your systems to meet everybody's needs. Oh, right. Because you right. can't be different here, 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 and here. It's not cost effective. But we could, we could move vertically, horizontally with whatever the doctor's needs. And that's part of our business model is we're trying behind the scenes. It's not so transparent to the consumer until they utilize the plan and see that this works for them. We try to remove the back end obstacles for doctors. So we allow doctors to be doctors because we want our members to feel that they have a quick access to their health care. Yeah. That's our bottom line. And that's kind of a big play on why you guys, from the very beginning, it sounds like you pushed dispatch, right? Because dispatch right. is, is hey, right. let's get the care to come to you. I mean, I if you wake up in the morning and you feel like you've got the flu and you know how that feels, I mean, you feel yes. like you just got hit by a pickup truck, right? So the last thing you want to do is get up and look halfway presentable, put some clothes on, jump in the car, drive to an urgent care, sit there for... 45 minutes waiting to be seen, you know, so if you could just say, okay, you guys will be here in an hour and a half. Great. I'm going to go back to sleep for the next hour and a half. And then you'll right. either call my phone and wake me up or ring my doorbell or whatever it might be. I exactly. Guess you know, but I don't have to leave my home and, and you guys are going to come to the, to the home. So, yeah, you know, I'll give you as simple as, as it is. Um, last year I had a, a broker call me and say, Hey, I got one of the bright health members, one of my clients on the phone. She's elderly. Her doctor's only two hour, uh, two miles away, but she doesn't feel well. And do you have transportation? And last year we didn't have transportation. Now we do. Yeah. And then while I was on the phone with him, it, it dawned on me. It's like, well, dispatch health. Yeah. And so I said, oh, wait, dispatch health. Call this number, have them call, but you know, let me know how it goes. And um, they'll be by and, and help her. She doesn't even have to drive anywhere. They'll come to her. And so uh, that's exactly what happened. And she, and she was so pleased. I think one of the challenges is to make sure that we do a good job in make, you know, reminding 
our membership that it's there for their use. Because yeah, the yeah. utilization we would like to see a little bit higher when it's needed. For, for but, sure. But well, it's, it's, it's definitely yeah. a, a great option. It's teaching people when not to call 911. Mm -hmm. So let's yeah. let's think or about the emergency room, right? right, let's think about our first responders. What are they really there to do? They're really there for the accidents on the freeway. I had a I had a fire captain tell me I have had a call from a lady who had an eyelash stuck in her eye. That is not a reason to call 911 and have a full <laughs> fire team dispatched to your home. But it's it's that kind of thing is we are boots on the ground along with Bright out there educating about, you know, really when is it when is it right and appropriate to call 911 think about it first so this morning i took um i took my vitamins without eating first mm. and my stomach hurt is mm -hmm. that something you could help with <laughs> i mean <laughs> probably is that, not probably not i shouldn't probably call for something not. like that but then. if you were <laughs> if you had flu like symptoms vomiting right. i hate to say it i talk about it all day long by uh, vomiting diarrhea headache things like that most definitely something we would come and see right. and now people are really frightened about any symptom that they have it's it's wow. it's just become this um this thing where people are very frightened about everything and very frightened to let someone come in their home so there's a couple of different scenarios we want to be convenient and helpful for them so on the front end when they call us we're reminding them of our protocols about how we handle people coming into their homes because you know and then they don't want to, we, we get there and it may be an emergent situation and they don't want to go to the ER. So care is so never, we, yeah. but it sounds like care is never prescribed over the phone, like telemedicine. It's always no. in person. It's just you guys. It is in, it is in person because that's our model. That's, that's what we model. do. Right. So we use advanced practitioners. So we use nurse practitioners and physician's assistants okay. and they always come with an EMT. They're okay. coming together as a team. So cool. uh, they've got all of the, we've got a 12 lead EKG. We have a CLIA certified lab. Uh, we've got a formulary on board so we can administer first dose. You know, we can do lacerations and, and minor fractures and right. all of those things. So people need to remember outside of what's happening with COVID that people are still getting sick. People are still, you know, spraining, you know, ankles. People right. are still cutting themselves. People are still getting ear infections, right? So those yeah. are the things we need to remember outside of this entire COVID universe that we're dealing with right now. Well, and when we're talking about emergencies too, I heard on the radio the other day that uh, this is a true story that somebody actually called into emergency because they ran out of toilet paper. Yeah. Think about that. They called into yeah, the emergency room because and, they, ran right. they ran out of toilet paper. I, or they, I don't, or I don't they know just want to talk to someone. That's an emergency. It, it, sometimes. Can, it can be an emergency in a sense. <laughs> I, I'm, I, I hadn't thought of that, but I mean, that could be an emergency in a sense. So, or you get someone who's calling just because they, they need to talk to somebody. They're lonely. They're isolated. They yeah, can't go uh, out. You never right. think about you know? the psychological. So it's, is there some yeah. sort yeah. of like a is there some sort of like a handoff process if you feel like someone needs a certain level of services that right. it's not in your guys' wheelhouse? Is there a handoff at that point? Right. So when we get on scene, we do what's called a social determinants of health. So we are on scene most typically for about fifty minutes, five zero, with our patients. Um, think about the time you spend with your primary care physician. You might get seven to 15 minutes, Holy right? Cow. So we are in the environment. We are able to see what's happening in the environment. So if there are needs beyond what we can provide, we certainly have resources that we can, mm. uh, and we and we communicate on scene with the primary care physician. We have an electronic medical system, electronic an EMR, and we send all those notes directly to the primary care physician. So they're communicated with right away. Um, also, we're looking at things like fall risks, like what's happening in your home. Do you have things? Uh, are, are they? Are you at risk for falling? Do you have enough food? So our providers now are carrying uh, bags with them with staples in them, uh, food staples yeah, yeah. that they can leave behind for um, our patients if they have some food insecurity okay. or they can't get out and go to the grocery store. So we're not delivering groceries. I've had a couple of calls. That people are like, can you deliver my groceries? No. Our providers are just carrying extra supplies with them as they see patients that may need them. Yeah. So, if somebody is in need of something, you're absolutely. Provide, but you and, guys aren't running to the store for somebody. Right. Which I mean, there are a couple of companies that actually are doing, are doing that, that right now like right. Uh, what, what's it called um instaclick well there's one called instacart yeah instacart or my something like errand that. ally actually does that they're yeah. one of our partners so we've partnered with um 
Save Your Hospice, My Errand Ally, uh, a couple of other companies to build our food how, pantry. How do you utilize the My Errand Ally services? I mean, are they? Well, it's are, just a re just it's just a resource. Yeah, so you would okay. have to get on their website and look at what they do. Okay, but they're just resources. So we try to, when we're on scene with our patients, provide as much as care as we can and as many resources as we can. As so part that's of pretty, our model. That's actually that's actually pretty awesome. So I mean, that's 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 really exciting. Um, and and that's one of the reasons why I wanted you guys to to really be here because I think that there are so many people who don't understand that your guys' service is even available. I mean, right. I'm shocked at the amount of time you guys have been in the local area. I mean, it's been a few years, right? right. Four years, five, three, three years. We're coming up on our third year, right? And I don't really. I mean, I'm still. I'll mention dispatch health or dispatch urgent care to people, and there's who. So I it's mean, because in this past year was the first year we did any kind of media. So we're typically boots on the ground. We're in our senior communities. We spend time with our seniors where they are. That's not but your only demographic. No, though, right? we, we see ages three months and above. So we wow. see, you know, commercial patients as well. So uh, all the way to the end of life, hospice and palliative care all the way to the end of life. So you guys are not with most insurance carriers, then you're not probably considered a specialist. You're really urgent care. Right. And it's the, it's typically most typically the cost of an urgent care copay, which okay. is billed Correct. to the members. So we're verifying the insurance up front and there's no financial transaction. It's billed to the member after the visit. Oh, wow. For the cost of the urgent care. There's copay. really no reason for people to avoid getting care. At this and point. there is I mean, not. There as is long not. as they are educated. I mean, right. education is key. So it's important right. that people know these things. Which is Right. And it's important for them to understand that we are taking every precaution to keep our not only our patients safe, but our providers safe. Have you ended up utilizing the services yourself before? Oh, absolutely. You seem like you're like healthy as a horse. So. I, I have. But most importantly, my my dad, who was 93, who passed this year, um, he was in he was in an, an independent living facility and uh, we used our teams just were wonderful with him. And my mother is going to be 89. So she's actually done several commercials for us. She lives in a mobile home uh, community. And whenever our cars pull up, they think that somebody's won the lottery. Everybody's going to no run doubt, out. Right? Like, did you win I've the lottery? Yeah. Big, like, don't you guys have like a little van or something? Well, we like actually, that, we started in, we started here in Maricopa County with uh, Toyota Priuses. So that's why people are, when they ask me, do you transport? Um, no, we're lucky that our teams were actually fitting in those vehicles. But now we have um, Nissan Rogues. So we uh, have branded Nissan Rogues that are very, very cute and very branded yeah, and yeah. see them out there. The so we have, we, yeah, yeah, we have five right now. We'll, we'll be getting our sixth vehicle, uh, hopefully in September. Yeah. Yeah. Well, David, shut up. Yeah, I'm David. Much, I, he like, just lets me talk. No, I'm He's such a so gentleman. much about dispatch. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah. Even more than I thought I would. Yeah. No, so. it's a, it, you know what? I love to talk about it because it's just a truly people are like, really? That's really what you do? Yes, it's really what we do and it and it works. And it's just such a beautiful concept. And, you know, our CEO, Dr. Mark Prather, is just very committed to, to patient care. He's very committed to not only uh, patient care, but our teams, the integrity of our teams, yeah. you know, and it, it's just a really great culture and environment to be part of. So that's, so that's, that's pretty awesome. So, I mean, it, it gets me to a point to where I'm, I didn't even realize that it was something that would be util is utilizable. Right. A word. Is yeah, utilizable right. an actual word? Utilizable, right. I think so. Utilize, but we're going to use it. We're going to yeah. utilize it. Um, yeah. So I didn't know it was utilizable for even someone like me. I mean, I thought that your guys' primary focus was- We have a mobile app was, too for you techie people. We've got a mobile awesome. app. You can see the car where okay. it's- Yeah. Where it's coming. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, like an Uber cool. or something. Yeah. Or, you know, so we like actually, uh, we've built all of our own platforms in-house. We've got our risk stratification platform was actually uh, designed by an ER physician, Dr. Phil Mitchell. And it was built, all of those proprietary platforms were built in-house. So we're kind of a technology company as well. Oh, okay. Well, and, it, and it's important to know that you know, when you're looking at your health plan, it, it's really under the urgent care, not emergency. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So the urgent care co-payment is right. it's typically applicable. much less. And not yeah. primary care. So if yeah. people get us very confused with their primary care physician. Uh, can I use you as a primary care physician? No. No, Correct. you can't. So, you know, we, we need to be super clear on who we are and what we do. Yeah, it's We're, not to yeah, replace. It's the not primary, to replace. Yeah. And even our primary care physicians are like, wait a minute, are you going to take my patients? No, because we're open 8 a.m. to 10 p.m., 
seven days a week. That includes the weekends. We are really a great partner to our primary care physicians. Yeah. We're there We're there on the weekend. We're there after hours for them. And that communication is going right back to them almost in real time. Well, I think a connection that I just, just made, like a, something that just clicked was I can almost, and I think that this is where education come in, comes in, because I can almost think to myself, in my head, I'm trying to say to myself, why is this better than, for example, a company that offers like, let's say a $0 copay for like a telemedicine. And then it just clicked for me where I was thinking to myself, well, a lot of times you're going to get on the phone with these telemedicine people where they're going to say, listen, you're requesting a level of a level of diagnosis that I would literally have to be there in person with you physically to examine you. And I can't. So you're going to need to go to an urgent care or go to an emergency room. So that's going to be one of those situations where, and I can't tell you how many times I hear from my members, my members, you know, we're, I'm in the insurance business. I've been in the insurance business for 15 years almost. And I can't tell you how many times I've had my members say, listen, I want a doctor to see me and touch me and feel me and make sure that this is normal or whatever. I want a doctor to actually right. give me care. I ironically, I think that telemedicine, there was like this huge pushback on telemedicine over the last few years. And then all of a sudden COVID-19 yep. happened is, and everyone's an amazing, begging for telemedicine, right? Amazing transformation. But, but still yes, telemedicine is just a tool. It's not the answer to everything. Just like uh, dispatch right. care is not the answer to everything, but it's a really great tool. And I think dispatch urgent care or dispatch health right. it rather has that area where you guys are able to much better serve in comparison to telemedicine. And then there are probably those areas where telemedicine will be just fine. Like right. if and someone really needs to get a prescription refilled, telemedicine a lot of times can do that. And there's right. no sense in dispatch health coming out to do that. But in our senior population, um, you know, it's really really utilized in our senior population. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I guess I didn't realize the magnitude of how utilized it really was. Right, right. So that's it. So so then, David, so with 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 Bright Health, or have you guys ever, like, have you personally utilized the services before? Have you utilized Not me dispatch? personally. Not no. you personally? No. I think Nicole probably should have. Well, it, it. It, it, it has to be on your health plan. And our health plan is is a, a different plan that doesn't. So what if it's a PPO offer. that provides out of network benefits? So we have a flat we have a flat fee of two hundred and seventy five dollars flat cash fee. So that's everything that happens in that environment in that moment is two hundred and seventy five dollars. So when you think of someone with a high deductible or someone who's got a higher cost, that two seventy five keeping you in your home for everything that's happening. So if you need if you need uh, the first dose of medication, you need to get stitched up, you need um, you know, it's treatment for an eye infection or ear infection or UTI. I mean, we do UTIs very well. Everything that happens right there is 275. It's a flat fee. Okay. So it's bundled. What we call in our industry, it's a bundled a bundled payment uh, and that's how it works. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's okay. so, so that's if you want to pay cash as opposed to using your insurance, that's the cost. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. We were we were actually talking about high um, deductibles. Yeah. And how it hits your deductible. Okay. It's every plan is different. All right. So I, I'd love to give you absolutes and I can't. Yeah, yeah. You're because people take my absolutes and go, You said I'm like, well, no. <laughs> so so and, yeah. So as a as a healthcare, like as a company that's actually like providing healthcare. Right. Where, how, what's your guys' thoughts on being out and being social. I mean, we've got our we've got our cloths here that we're wiping ourselves down and right. disinfecting and our sanitizers so, and all that yeah. stuff. But so where does the line get drawn between like we're being cautious and we're locking everybody down or we're going overboard or what is what is dispatches or maybe even not speaking on behalf of dispatch, but just your opinion on where where do we draw the line as far as we're just being careful and we're overboard? Well, I think do you want me to go? No, you go ahead. Talk? Go, um yeah. well yeah. You know, the way I look at it is uh, we are clinical providers and a lot of our clinical providers have small children. So we're very cognizant of the fact of keeping them safe as well as keeping our patients safe. So first and foremost, we were not doing any kind of testing for COVID. We were not seeing COVID patients because we had never ordered N95 masks. We never needed them. Mm. So we had to wait. We have 19 different markets across the United States. So we had to wait until 
Each market had an adequate supply of N95 masks, and our providers were actually fit tested. What's the difference between an N95 mask and every other mask? Well, the N95 mask is actually configured in such a way that it keeps it keeps the particles from entering in any way, shape, or form. So, so it has a, no gaps. And it mm. has no gaps, and it's actually fit tested on their face. So it's got to be fitted to their face so it's a, it's tightly sealed. Oh, okay. So um, in order to see anyone that was COVID positive uh, or even we thought had those COVID symptoms, we had to have those N95 masks. And you're providers. seeing a lot of those people now, right? So or we have just in the last two weeks, we finalized all our fit tests. We have an adequate supply of N95 masks across all of our national markets. And we are, yes. So, it, but it all begins with the care request. So you can't just call us and say, hey, I, I need a, I need a, COVID test. No, we're not just coming out to randomly test people. I can't tell you how many senior communities has wa have wanted us to come and test their entire staff. That, yeah. That's not the way we're looking at testing. We are leaving it up to our provider's discretion. If someone has COVID symptoms, they're, they're going to get there. Right. They're going to get there. They're going to assess what's happening because they're advanced practitioners, which is what you're used to seeing in doctor's office, right? You very rarely see a physician, you're seeing an advanced practitioner. So we're leaving it to the provider's discretion as they get on scene and assess the situation. But they are, they are safe. Um, and we waited until they were completely safe to let them enter that environment. That's I, really our, my opinion is I, I'm with my, I haven't been staying at home. I've been really in my office with my clinical teams, making sure that they had an adequate supply of PPE and making sure that every surface in our office was clean and sanitized, including our kits, right? The kits that we take in and out of homes. So there's just a responsibility factor when so you guys much are so. out in the community. So, I mean, like the sanitizers and yeah, people in, in, are scared, people yeah. are frightened and, and, you know, they're, they're as frightened of us coming in as they are going out. So we just, I need to keep saying that because they need to understand that we understand, you know, the level of, of uh, you know, infection control that we need to have to enter someone's home. We understand that we do it very well. And we've taken, we've taken a little more time uh, to get that right. Uh, so I'm very proud of my team. Are, for are you guys, are you, are you seeing, I think that this is probably like people are turning on the news and this is like the topic of the day. Oh, yeah. Are, are, People are, are scared. There, are there tests? Are there like, are there enough tests now? So we're using a we're using a nasal swab. We uh, we send it out. Oh, those are to, fun. Yeah, we I know, and it's <laughs> those it's, are terrible. The and we're all the way up, and then it like, it's it's really like scratches brain. your it's brain. Super, but you know, <laughs> we we were using um, rapid flu tests before this, and that's the type of test that we would use, and we would test for flu on site, right? So our providers are very used to that. But we're sending that out through a third party vendor called GTI. We FedEx that out, and our results are coming back within five to seven days. So it's oh. not a rapid, immediate test. It's a little bit more prolonged. But there's enough we want, tests yeah, now. We do have enough tests. So again, cool. we waited until we found, we've got some really smart mostly ER doctors that run our company. So, you know, they're into the science of it, looking at making sure that, you know, we have enough of everything before we just go ahead and pull the trigger, which Dispatch is really is important. Not, uh, they're not a publicly traded company yet, not are you? Yet. Not yet. <laughs> Not, not yet. yet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would, I would you know, it's um, our CEO is very pragmatic. He's very conservative. He's very thoughtful because first and foremost, he was a clinician. He's a doctor, right? Yeah. So he- He was a physician first. He was a he physician was a first, right? right. He, um, he was Which a is interesting because one of our owners at Bright Health is a doctor. Right. Yeah. And so I think, yeah, I that's think important. You, we're not public either yet, just yet. But not when yet, you look so. at when you, they are very invested in doing things um, the right way scientifically, especially in this time. So the most interesting thing that they're working on, and I'll kind of, kind of spill the beans on this in Denver, our corporate office is in Denver. They are in the midst of a pilot where they are actually bringing a hospital to the home. So they're taking our care a little bit deeper and um, this is a branch of dispatch. It, it will be it will be something they're working on a pilot now. It's a it's a hospital at home pilot. So like full hospital services. Yeah. Right? So um, looking at what we how we can expand our services in the home. We're is not that doing something that, that would yet. typically fit with inside the uh, reasonable and customary costs and expenses built into a health plan? It, it it is, and they're and they're sounds horribly expensive. Well, they're working on a pilot with a partner 
in Denver to actually um, facilitate these services so they can Whoa. look at, you know, they're looking at all of those things. Because who how, wants to be in a hospital? Right. Seriously, so there, there are things you, you can extract out of the hospital environment and take into the home environment. And that's where you have to, you know, you have to be super cautious about how you're doing it and, you know, how it's executed. So that's something well, interesting. Well, probably has to be the right type of patient. It too. does. If that patient's at risk for like, Pos if they're if they're if they could possibly go into like cardiac arrest, then you right. can't move them to an ICU if they're you're in their living room. You know what I mean? And so those are the types of things you obviously need to but be you mindful know, of. You know, to get back at your the beginning of your question is is where's that fine line between right. where does it get crazy? Cautious and, yeah, and like it's just, we're just losing our minds scared of everything I think right it, now. I think of it on a, a couple of different levels. One, um, is is it work? You know, I kind of follow the leadership. Our our leadership at Bright. We meet every mon Monday on a webinar and they're giving us updates and us having a doctor as an owner sometimes has some insight that we otherwise wouldn't have that we're picking up from the news. And they, they keep us up informed and up to date and talking about the phases of coming back. And they're really protective of the employees. So we're all still working from home. Um, but you know, you really have to go to the individual, right? I mean, well, yeah. you and I were even talking about it earlier. Like, yeah. I'm not going to walk around looking over my shoulder. That's true. But I, I certainly don't want to be a carrier and I am asymptomatic. And well, I don't, yeah. yeah. I don't you want to be I'm, I'm fine, but I'm okay. And then you go somewhere. Like, even this weekend, I was going to go to California to visit my son. And, you know, his immune system is a little bit down was uncomfortable with it. So I'm not going to go see him out of that respect. So well, if I have clients of mine, I guess the way this whole thing works is you could, you could be contagious for up to 14 days and you're not even showing symptoms, right? Right. You're running around just giving it to people. So that's why like as a company, we are, we're working by appointment only and we are scrubbing our clients before they come with questions like, yeah. um, do you feel like your immune system is weakened? Do you, do you take medications? You know, do you, you know, are you susceptible to certain health related issues? Because our office is very clean. We're appointment only, as you guys know, the, the door was locked when you got here. Right. Yeah. So we only let people come in by appointment only, but we're not going to let someone come to our office, nor are we going to go to their home if we feel like they have a weakened immune system, because I feel great but I might yeah. not be great. Right. And, and, and if yeah. I'm not great, although I feel great and I go, it could wipe them out in a week. Right. right? Yeah. And right. so we're still taking those measures. Absolutely. But if I'm pretty healthy, you're pretty healthy, you're pretty healthy, our producer's pretty healthy. I mean, everybody seems pretty healthy. We, I understand that there is a potential risk, which is why we take precautions. We've got the sanitary wipes. We've got, you know, we're not kissing each other and all that stuff, right? You know, thank God. But we're, <laughs> yeah, but, right, Jeez. right. Jeez. Nobody's kissing me. You know, wow. I, I, I know. I'm so, sorry, 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 Rebecca. I apologize, but there's a problem. There's a pretty good chance my wife is going to watch this episode. So uh, he's but, not kissing anybody. <laughs> but you know, I kind of used the example earlier of like. My, I live in a really safe neighborhood and our, my, our neighborhood hasn't had a break in in over three years, but I still lock my door at night. Mm -hmm. And it's not because I'm afraid someone's going to break in, but it's because I know that there is a possibility that it could happen. And, you know, it's not worth it to my f friends and family to run the risk. So, you know, I still live there. I still have a front door. My house is still capable of being broken into, but I'm going to lock the door just to try to prevent it from happening. Yeah. And so it's the same, you know, we we clean the doors, we sanitize the place and we do the best we can. Um, but I don't, I don't know that it's realistic to any longer just move forward, looking over our shoulders and never interacting with anybody anymore. And, and you know, that, that kind of leads me to, I guess the big, I was watching the news just yesterday and they're still having this whole big, huge discussion slash debate over hydroxychloroquine. Yeah. What's the deal with that? I mean, so for one, is it a medication that is covered by Bright? Do we know if it's on the formulary? And two, is it a medication that we're even allowed to prescribe right now? Rebecca, do you know? I I can pretty much say we are not prescribing it in this moment. Okay. I don't know if we have it on our formulary yeah. or not. I know it's a medication that's been around for about 40 years. Right. Yeah. So there's a good right. chance that we do have I it. Think, I bet you I have the uh, the Bright Health formulary right here on my yeah. phone. Oh, I bet you do. But that's a, you know Bright what? That's a super interesting <laughs> question that you just asked. And yeah. I mean, I can in all confidence say our providers are not 
prescribing it, but I don't know if it's, but yeah, it's, I don't, it's I don't a good know question if that's for pivot. your formulary. No, yeah, it's just not. I don't not. know if that's the pivot yet. Yeah. So we meet, you know, still uh, looking at yeah, we meet three times a week as a leadership team. And then uh, we've got a, a task force that filters all information through. And then I, my PPE is counted every single day as inventory. So we know how many days yeah. on hand we have okay. everything. So um, we're pretty organized. Yeah. Well, I just know that there's, I think that there's, I don't know if you guys have been running into people who are not requesting yet. it being filled. It's being I'm talked sh- about yeah, a lot. Yeah, I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's going to start to come. Yeah. So that's a, that's I a good question. I haven't had any calls from any brokers. So nobody, nobody is calling their broker who enrolled them to say, right. Hey, what about this? So yeah. I don't know. I mean, maybe it's to come, but uh, I think everybody's still being kind of careful, you mm-hmm. know? So yeah. Uh, but, you know, you know, like at, at Bright Health, you know, we're, you know, we've got things in place for our members. You know, we have the doctors on demand when we're talking about the telemedicine. Right. We've, you know, you know, we're given the free transportation. So we're, doctors on demand, it's not MD Live, WebMD, it's doctors on demand is your guys' telemedicine provider. That's ours. That's yeah, yours. That's our telemedicine. Okay. Yeah. I okay. think there's a lot of instances where telemedicine is completely appropriate. Oh, sure. So um, I. I. We actually spun up a quick telemedicine um, portion of our business for one of our carriers because they requested it. So we've well, got a virtual doctor. Yeah. I mean, even it. today at three o'clock, I have a follow-up call with my cardiologist and it, it's, it's a webcast. It's, yeah. it's just, I think it's completely just check appropriate, in. but same copay, everything. Yeah. Right. You know? Right. So, well, yeah. I mean, new I, normals, right? I think well, there's going to be a, a lot it's of a new, new norm. norms. We're, hit, we're hitting on yeah. the new norm pretty hard. I think that I actually, I, I need to be very careful at the way I word this because I don't want it to sound like I'm excited about what's happening right now because I'm totally not excited. I mean, this, right. is, this has been a terrible experience for right. the whole world. I mean, this has been oh, really bad. But I do think that um, I do think that it is possible to take advantage of allowing ourselves to grow mm. outside of exactly. bad experiences, mm-hmm. right? And so with that being said, it was kind of like the whole telemedicine thing before where I think if you were to ask me two years ago, I would tell my clients, I would say, hey, guess what? They've got a telemedicine benefit and my clients would just throw a fit and they'd go, right. this is just the insurance companies not wanting for us to meet with a doctor. They're just trying True. to they're just trying True. to let us get yep. sick. They just want us to pick up the phone and call someone. They're just trying to save money. And I'm sitting here thinking- You're absolutely right. That was the th- conversation. That, that was what they were thinking, sure. right? And I'm sitting yeah. here thinking, and I'm t- trying to tell my clients, I'm going- that is so totally far from the the truth right. of what telemedicine is looking to accomplish. What telemedicine is looking to accomplish is if if okay, if my son has pink eye and I'm like, dude, you've got pink eye. Like you could tell. Everyone knows what pink eye looks like, right? I don't need to walk into an urgent care in order to get my pink eye addressed. I right. could pick up the phone and I could call a telemedicine doctor and I go, my kid has pink eye. And when they go, why do you think your kid has pink eye? I could take my phone and I could hold it to my kid's face and go, see, that's kid's got pink eye. <laughs> and the doctor is going to go, okay, cool. There's a prescription waiting at the pharmacy a mile away from you. It'll right. be ready in an hour. Have a nice day. And I never had to leave my home. I mean, it's, it's the, it's, it's a, it is a convenience factor. It really is. You know, it's like, you know, and I like to compare something like Dispatch Health. I, I was comparing Dispatch Health to like Grubhub, right? Yeah. Or Uber Eats or DoorDash or whatever. You know, you've got people that are delivering. Those companies are booming right now. They're, they're exploding. They're, they're, sure. they're, I mean, Chipotle is actually utilizing um, Grubhub and DoorDash and they're, they, I don't know if they're still doing it, but they were doing free delivery. So you would order online and they would deliver to your home for free and they wouldn't charge you the fee. You'd probably have to tip the driver, but they were delivering at home for free. And so I think that people are really embracing those areas of convenience now. And I think that the point I was getting to was I don't think that I want to say I'm happy about what's happened, but I am glad that I I think people are starting to now become more open-minded to the other areas of utilizing services and care. Yeah. Or the other areas of utilizing certain businesses and certain companies. And I know that a lot of restaurants are suffering, but there is this area where it's like adjust. You know what I mean? Start right. having food delivered right. to people's homes. You know, you can do it. It's going to take an adjustment. Or, you know, you need to get care. Cool. Pick up the phone and call a telemedicine or have dispatch come to your right. home. Those features and options are available. It's just you're going to have to adjust, you know. Sure. And so when I when I said earlier I hate change, I was being completely I was being completely facetious because 
I, I love progression. I actually really enjoy when things improve for the better. Well, and, and don't you think even even on a personal, don't we learn more out of our mistakes oh, than we absolutely. do? Oh, absolutely. I mean, 100%. you know, what, what's really happening to the world, <laughs> I know That's you right. don't make mistakes. You are kind of wonderful. I made a couple <laughs> this year, just two though. Um, but um, <laughs> I made a mistake once. I thought I was wrong about something. Oh, yeah. I but I, was, I wasn't. That would bother me all yeah. day long. It was, it was bad. This is a definitely a male conversation. <laughs> male con I am, oh, because I'm, you're I'm, never I'm, wrong. I'm dipping out of this. I have three children. I am not wrong. Please. You know, the if good news survive, is, is you're probably stronger than both of us. I, <laughs> so uh, you're, That's you're, probably you're true. definitely, you're, you're definitely in better shape than, than I am. So at least let us exuberate our, our masculinity in one way or another, because <laughs> okay, you, could probably right. beat the, you could probably beat the crap out of both of us. So, um, Anyways, that's yeah. a compliment, really. Yeah, is. that's I. I will take that compliment. I work really hard, <laughs> <laughs> right? So, how have you been working out? By the way, I mean, at home, what what have you been doing? So, I'm um, actually a funny thing. I was a yoga instructor and a personal trainer for many years. So, I have this this um, collection of workout DVDs. I have a uh, stationary cycle bike. Uh, I have a workout room in my my townhome, and uh, I've been doing that. But also, I do F forty five, which is a functional hit workout you from Australia. Me. It's um, uh, it's just it's changed it's changed my body. It's just the most amazing thing. So they were actually doing. Is it kind of um, like insanity? I it did is, insanity once. It it is. Uh, I would say um, you know the whole beach body repertoire. I'm a big fan. I have. Ta I have tapes. Yeah. We'll say tapes. I do have tapes. I have DVDs that are <laughs> years and years VHS. old. I was a big Beachbody <laughs> fan a, for many years. Yeah, you yeah. know what that is. But um, <laughs> it is. It's a. It is. It's like a. It's like a traditional hit workout. So there's a lot of dynamic movement, uh, burpees and uh, stuff. Or? Burpees. Yeah. So dynamic burpees, um, strength, um, pushing the sled. Just it's not, but it, what it's not is CrossFit, which is can be really dangerous oh, yeah, to people. Yeah. Um, we're not all elite athletes, so it's something that someone could do in a progressive way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Not have to be, you know, go kill yourself trying to flip a tire. It's not like that. So it's a little, and it's a little bit. I would say it's a little bit more advanced than an Orange Theory, which you're doing. Okay, uh, you're doing like a treadmill, and, and so a that's row like a daily or, thing for you. You're, you're um, I do well. I was doing out. it. Uh, my daughter's a trainer for them and does uh, social media for them, and so um, she kind of got me into it. And I've been doing uh, probably every every other day. I'll do a an online workout, but now they've just opened. Um, they just opened back up and, and so the I, gyms, the gyms, the gyms have just yeah. opened and most typically a class will have between 25 and 27 people in it. So they've cut that in half. I was shocked at how many people were at the gym. Yeah. I, well, they've got, you know, people, people that work out the way I do, you know, we live stressful lives and yeah. it's a, it's a way to, to get rid of that stress. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not a really young person. Uh, I need a way to get rid of, you know, my metabolism doesn't th work the way that it used to. I need a way to really get into that stress and manage it. Yeah. And I've always felt a plate of nachos inside <laughs> me with stress, with extra jalapenos. And if I could get I some like extra cheese too. on there, those bottom chips, <laughs> that, that layer, Need Don't some cheese in, in a nice that pilsner, a maybe, David and a nice pilsner. <laughs> what is it? You're you're the blonde guy, the blonde ales or the pilsners? A yeah, pils? you know, I, I'm a pale ale guy. <laughs> you're but pale lately, ale. I have been watching my waist grow, and um, <laughs> the COVID I decided, 15. <laughs> you know, the blondes are a little bit better right now, and kind of into the Scottsdale blonde. That's a that you know, I, but we, we, <laughs> we were. I was with. I was with. The, we were with Nicole Brown, and Which is it was a beer. A, yeah, yeah, we were. I was with Nicole Brown. You weren't actually at this meeting. This was probably about a year and a half ago, and she was going on this rant about how I really need to watch what I eat, right? And I remember well, she had I had just this, had a baby. I think she too. had just had a baby. Yeah, that, she, I really that need changes to, some things. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I had this moment where I I grabbed my burger and I said, "I watch what I eat. Watch." <laughs> right, right. And I like right. watched my burger as it was going into my mouth. <laughs> You know, so yeah. But if but, but was, you know what, if you if you work out and you can manage, you can have a burger. You can have nachos. Oh, for sure. I mean, yeah, I love you just nachos. Can't eat like an irresponsible. Where Where do idiot. you find your favorite nachos? Where do you get oh, them? Um, oh, I can answer that. Uh, oh, Chelsea's. Marley's has good old fashioned. You know the restaurant, the old basketball player. He has his own restaurant. Dan Marley. Dan Marley. Yeah, really? My, his, my daughter. Is he, still, yeah. is he still the basketball coach for Grand Canyon University? 
I don't know. My but, daughter uh, put herself through but college. His, and his nachos yeah. at his... <laughs> One of Marley's one of I didn't know he had a restaurant. Nacho King. Yeah. I didn't know he had a restaurant. You know, do you remember the old, they, they closed down all of them in Arizona and I'm just heartbroken about it. But do you remember Rock Bottom? Yes. They had the best nachos I've ever had in my whole life. Really? They had the best Chelsea's nachos. Chelsea's Kitchen has some amazing nachos. Really? If you've, if you've ever. I yeah. knew we'd get on the nachos. So, nacho. Yeah, the I nacho am such a, but if you're ever in Vegas, go to Guy Fieri's restaurant over by the link. Oh my God, he has the most amazing nachos. Are they good? They bring them That's, in a can. Oh it's in this can and they push the button. They all fall out. It's the most amazing you heard thing it here, I've folks. ever eaten. You heard it here from <laughs> Guy Fieri's restaurant. Guy Fieri's. The best nachos. I'm a big nacho fan. So oh, when you said nachos, nachos are like, you, but are you, you like, got me. I measure Let me ask a you a restaurant question. based you, on their nachos. Are you oh, yeah. like a late night drive through Taco Bell nachos no. kind of person? Like, will you, uh, will you embrace the nacho regardless? No, I could. Yes. You could. No. Oh yes. I don't eat fast food. Oh yes. I I try to. Well, yeah. I but but let me ask you a question. Do you really think that that Taco Bell's nachos are going to be much worse for you than Guy Fieri's nachos? They're going to taste worse. They're going to. Guy, gonna, <laughs> Guy Fieri taste makes his own. You know, I don't typically like that saucy, plasticky cheese stuff. No, 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 no. But no. he the makes fake cheese. He makes his own from scratch, and it's. I the read bomb. an article once that fake like cheese? <laughs> no, no, no. So I read My an wife article. Like, Belbita is cheese. <laughs> no, 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 like, no, 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 it's no. Not. So, so I, I read this article story about David Luna. And I read nachos. this uh, David Luna. We'll talk about David Luna in just a second. Holy I got it. Hi, Dave. Uh, so I read this article that basically said that Velveeta cheese, and this is like true. Like if you look at the components and the ingredients in the makeup of the cheese, it is literally close. It closer resembles plastic, plastic, yeah, than it does cheese. It, I mean, it's there's it no dairy in it. It, it is more it's of great it's tasting more plastic. Pl <laughs> it's the best tasting plastic you've ever it had. It really is. It's, but you know, and I tried to argue the point with my wife, and I looked at the Velveeta box, and nowhere on there says cheese. I don't think they can even say cheese. They have the Velveeta now that says now made with real cheddar cheese. Oh, oh. Uh, probably. And they just you know anybody so that knows I'm product in. development, you just kind of wave so it that's over. Just, and seriously, say that. That, well, there was. If they you can see what you started with the whole is, nacho this this conversation. Just, Jeez, we're like squirrel, I, squirrel, I knew this squirrel, was going to happen. Let's go. You know, I, I we should have before we started this. We should have you know, said you were we can't thinking. Should I have David Wesley come on this or <laughs> talk about nachos? We're gonna smarter. end up talking about nachos and beer the whole yeah. time. Yeah, I want to have fun. Let's yeah, get me let's and get talk about go. nachos. I, you know, I was thinking I'm gonna be a fun hater. I'm gonna hate fun, but then I was like, I can't hate fun. Yeah, I'm gonna have Dave Wesley come in because <laughs> you know. So well, I mean, that's so I was, you know, I totally lost my train of thought when you started talking about the beers and the nachos and sure. I, I. So, anyways. So, okay. you know, not that all the other things were important. Right. I mean, weren't well, important. Kind of, sort of, you know? sort of. But I think yeah. it's such a, such a great example of the things that were missing socially. So, you know, I, my daughter, I have twin daughters that are going to are 28 right now. And of course, the moment Old Town Scottsdale, anybody was able to set foot in Old Town Scottsdale, off, you know, off she was. I have one that lives in Seattle, but, you know, they're still in lockdown. Uh, she works for Amazon, so they're not even going back to work until probably oh the gosh. end of the year. So she's down it's bad in over downtown there in Seattle. I have a friend that's from there. Uh, right. So, uh, but my daughter, they were in Old Town all weekend. And, you know, I don't know if you saw the news when we, the first mm -hmm. day we opened up that restaurant on Mill, Casa, it was packed yeah. so people that social the social factor of it all people are hungry for that and i think that's causing it's causing people to be a little less responsible than they should be they're being because, a little overzealous yeah, with getting out there right I think, right? right and i just saw something actually on facebook um i was i went up to sedona this past weekend didn't even make it uh, there's this great place called the pump house in the new Talakapaki across the street, if you ever go there, it's amazing. But didn't even make it past the Y. We got to the Y and I'm like, let's go to Cottonwood because it was bumper to, to bumper, bumper oh my gosh. traffic. And what that's created is there's so much trash and so many things that people are leaving behind there in Sedona and the canyon and everything. I was just looking at Facebook, but um, Cottonwood was great. Takes some well, time. Well, you know what? I actually think that I it, it kind of, it, I, I don't want to say it brings a tear to my eye because I don't cry ever. Um, I'm sure, Macho. I, I do. I, actually, I do. I'm do you have pink pansy? <laughs> <laughs> but but um, I, there's this wonderful You're restaurant. So bad. Yeah, there's this wonderful restaurant up the road here 
called Char Pizzeria Neapolitano. Oh. But there's it's only one of them, um, and they make some. They buy probably the best Neapolitano style pizza you've ever had. Which wow. I I'm like, what the heck is Neapolitano pizza? And they're just like, well, it just has to do with the the yeast that we use, and it's imported from Italy, and blah 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 blah. But it's this locally owned place. Mm-hmm. And um, it was heartwarming because before they allowed all the restaurants to open just this past week, like three weeks ago, they posted online that they were they said, look, it we tried doing takeout delivery. Right. And they said, unfortunately, we we don't Can't think we're going to make it. it. Yeah. We're we're shutting down. It's going to be indefinitely. Most likely it's going to be permanent. And um, then it was reported that some local people from around town were like, no way. And so they actually had some local people from oh, around town so come great. together that were like donating to be, being donors. Right. To that's just a great say, story. like, you guys are a little local restaurant. We love you. You've been serving our area for a long time. We we know the family of the people that run the restaurant. There's no possible way we're going to let this happen. And I walked in there. I was so psyched to just get food from them, right. to support them, right? To And so I walked in there to get food and I saw the owner and she was just around a crowd of people and people were talking to her and I picked up my food and she said, thanks for coming in. And I said, I said, look, congratulations on making it through this. And she had already been crying because right. they had just opened and she was so ecstatic. And she looked at me and she said, I'm not exaggerating when I say this. It is literally the community and the community only. They are the reason why we are still open right now. I'm yep. so grateful. Thank you for coming in and and getting food from here. And and that's that kind of stuff to me is humongous. And we're going to hear more I, and oh more yeah, of those people stories are happy. Too. I was just at the Macintosh yesterday there. It's uh, in on 20th Street in Highland, um, and. People are excited to be back at work. They want to yes. be, they mm-hmm. want to be working. They want to be out, but you know, they're being very responsible and, and, um, same thing when we were up North. I mean, the people in Cottonwood were just so excited to be yeah. back and you understand that's their livelihood. Yeah. They, um, you know, they're, they're used to working and they want to work and, and, you know, I think it's, we need to be very respectful of, you know, their positions as well. Um, right. And, yeah. and respect them. But I agree with you. I think what this is going to do as for us as a, as a nation is going to show us, uh, you know, what's really important. I agree. I, I want, and I want it before we, before we kind of conclude things, I want to talk about AEP a little bit. Yes. You had asked me. I had asked you, and now we got so we got we got so sidetracked on nachos. Uh, nachos, so, David. Thanks. And, and it, you're taking me out for nachos. Chill out on the nachos. You are done. Listen, we, actually, we need to schedule a nachos date. We do. I think I, that that would I'm be a, really cool. Uh, that we'll, would be we'll, do, we'll have to order several different so we can make a judgment. On we we what we'll probably be. have to do is we'll we'll I'm probably going to tell the audience make sure you watch the next. Um, coming episodes because we'll, we'll make that. sure that we get some footage from our nachos date and then we'll add it onto the next oh, one of the next cool. few yeah. episodes. Like so we'll that. do a little follow up for our nachos right. date. But you had asked me what. Yeah, what is? My, yeah, I've been having a lot of conversations about what that's going to look like this year. So, what AEP is going to look so like. So, da- so David, tell us what AEP is, and then I want to hear what Bright yeah. Health is. We're, you know, we're Nicole and I have been working on um, this already as to what that might look like, and you know, we're. We're not 100% sure how this is going to play out. If it, you know, we're thinking that we might even have some virtual meetings. So we're looking member at meetings or for member, brokers for which, member which, meetings. Which, yeah, I'm available. Have for. them, you know, come on for that. Bring do a presentation. Um, you know, we're looking into CMS with getting how do we properly and effectively get a scope of appointment. I think there's a lot of people listening who probably don't know what CMS is. So, you know, Centers for Medicare right. and Services. That's, Medicare and Medicaid Services. Yeah, right. that's who we report to basically. And, um, and, and phone, so, uh, probably phone enrollments. Yeah, yeah. But, I, but I think I, I, I have anticipate by license. then <laughs> we'll probably have some person to person, but yeah. we're, we're going to cut them down. Yeah. To have well, fewer. So, so I, I think that, um, I think that you're probably right. And AEP is annual enrollment period. So that's, that's the, um, from October 15th through December 7th, unless for some reason I, I can't imagine Medicare changing it, for, changing the enrollment period it. this year or extending it. I, I just, I can't imagine, but for the time being, AEP is October 15th through December 7th. And that's obviously when everybody's going to have that opportunity to yeah. change your health plan. Right. And I have a particular opinion that I, um, I, I don't know if I'm going to say I'm proud of it, but I stand really firm on this, that I think that there's a lot of brokers in this industry that 
they just don't mean it. And by what I what I mean by that is, you know, they'll show up to these these big meetings where these insurance companies are saying, hey, come look at our product. We're going to provide you lunch. We're going to blah, blah, blah. And then these people just show up. And that's like the only time of year you see them. You got these brokers that are just not really working. They have a couple of clients and the clients are really just like their friends. And and they're, they're, not, they're not really full-time insurance brokers. They're not really putting in the work. I think that this is really going to shove them out of the yeah, way. Separate. I, I, I don't, I don't yeah. know that if, if you... If you are, I guess, a quote unquote lazy broker, and I, I guess if you're, Ooh. if you take that, if you take that personal <laughs> right now, it's probably because I'm talking to you, right? Right. Tr- like, you know true. what I mean? That's and, a good way you know, to place I, I, it. I could, I yeah. could, I could name probably 20 or 30 brokers sure. right now that sure. I work as hard as I work on a regular basis because if I don't, those guys are going to pass me. I mean, because they're just rock solid dudes, right? And yeah. they're not even a part of my agency. I could name a oh, bunch of people. Oh, they're all male? They're... they're <gasps> Oh. No, actually, as a matter of fact, one of the best tick, 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 one of the best brokers I've ever ooh. seen in my entire life is Maricela Santana. She's just an absolute oh yeah, she's a friggin' amazing. rock star, right? Yeah. Here we go. I mean, she Let's just give him some credit. She, she just impresses. She hasn't been doing it that long. I but guess she has the right attitude, and she has the right well, attitude. That's who you and so need the, to be interviewing. She'll she'll be here eventually. She'll <laughs> she will be. But the the point is, is that like there's the whole COVID nineteen thing. There's the social distancing thing. There's the changes in the market. There's um, electronic enrollments. Face to face meetings are going to be dumbed down. In 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 person presentations are going to probably still happen, but not to the magnitude that they did. There's going to be so much transition, and you've got all these brokers out there that are doing you know, 20 enrollments a year for crying out loud. They're, they're helping maybe 20 clients a year, which really is not a lot if you know this business. And I think that it's not going to be worth it for those people to stay in this business. I think that it's going to weed them out. And I personally am psyched on that. I mean, oh. the, and, and I, and, and I, I'm not actually sorry if that bothers anybody. The fact of the matter You're is, a little is controversial I, right now. <laughs> yeah, but it, it, it doesn't, okay. but it doesn't bug show. me because I, I understand. <laughs> I, I, I meet with clients on such a regular basis where they'll say, look, I I'll say, Hey, you know, they're having a problem with their health plan. And I'll say, okay, well, what, what did your, what's your insurance agent doing to help you? And they're, they'll basically say, look, my insurance agent, I, some guy came to my house or some woman came to my house three years ago. They yeah. signed me up on this plan never and then they jumped on their white horse yeah. and right. rode off into the sunset yeah. and I never heard from him again. Yeah. That's a huge problem in this industry. It's a yeah. huge problem in this business. And I'm really pumped that what's going on right now is going to weed them out. Because there's, you know, we want to help people as best we can, you know, and, and sure. we want to make sure that our phone is ringing and we're answering it. And we're taking care of our clients. And so I think that that's going to ultimately bring a big change into AEP. I think you're going to see a lot less of those types of brokers being active. I think they're probably going to start disappearing. You're going to see a lot less of those onesies and twosies agents. And you're going to see a lot more of like the agents that really mean it. They're working this business full time. They're there for their clients 40, 50, 60 hours a week. And so I think enrollments will probably be the, I think the quantity is going to be down, but the quality is going to be up. Mm. Sure. Does that make sense? Sure. Absolutely. And I think to your point where it's going to weed out some of the, the agents that aren't really proactive the way maybe they should be, but even the ones that are proactive, they're going to have, they're, they have a new tool now because be really if you weren't now. doing social media, if you weren't doing webinars, now you've been kind of forced to learn how to do it just to keep up. Well, yeah. And guess what? That's a win. Yeah. Because now you have another way to enroll somebody when you're in Goodyear and somebody's in Chandler. Yeah. And you don't have the time to drive o- over there. You could enroll them online electronically. I agree. And, and it well, will it's and make, a customer service function. You it know is. What I mean, you have yeah. to serve. I have an insurance license. I've had one for 30 years. Good for you. Um, okay. But it's, you know, it's all about customer service. I started my career in large group sales. Okay. Uh, so I, I understand what that's like. Absolutely. But, I mean, well, it's it's servicing your customer. Who's your customer? What do they really need? The, right. And what's well, and what's actually really exciting about what you just said is I have an agency and we've got about 150 brokers here in Arizona. And so I look at it as I have two different types of customers. I have my clients and then my agents are Mm -hmm. my customers. And so I I don't want, I don't want there to be, I don't want this to be mistaken or taken wrong. There are agents out there that are maybe not as active as they could be, but it's because maybe they're kind of lost and they want to be more active and they, they've tried things and they've, they've missed, you know, they've taken the shots and they've missed and they have 
the the drive and the motivation to be more active if they were given the right tools. Those are not that's not who I'm talking to. I'm talking about the people who sit around and they're calling the insurance companies and going, "Well, you're not sending me leads." And, right. you know, th those types of people. Um they're the types of people that I kind of take issue with. But if you're a broker and you're out there and you're like, "Look, I just want to get out there and grind. I just need maybe some mentorship, some guidance. I need someone to help me understand like what platforms are available for me to do that. I'll put in the work. I just need someone to help sure. me. Listen, give us a call. Like right. I have a, I have 150 brokers. I'm welcome to take on more. We want to help those types of people. And I, that's the type of agent that's going to do well in this business. So right. I don't want, I'm going to agree with you because last year uh, that was my first AEP with dispatch health was last year. And I made it a point to try to go to as, to try to go to as many meetings as I could try to help as many people as I could facilitate whatever I could. I gave them my cell phone number and said, please utilize me for any mm -hmm. presentation yep. you need. We've had I you. mean, yeah, absolutely. We've had you at so House. I'm going to say yeah. that to you as well. I understand this business very well. I understand what you do. I'm available for anything that you need especially during AEP. I understand it's such an important time. And especially now, I think we're looking for convenience. We're looking for those value added services to bring our clients. And can we throw um, like your contact information, yeah, like so, email or, or like a phone or sure, something like absolutely. that at the bottom of the video so absolutely. that people can and, know and how to get in touch I with am, you? Uh, I'll give you both my care request line and my cell phone yeah, yeah. line. So I'm available to your brokers if they want to use me for a presentation. Um, I understand their world very well. I'll, I'm happy to do it anytime. Yeah. Will you do push-ups? We still have enrollment kits available. <laughs> you still, we, for your 850 agents? You still yeah. have enrollment we kits We still available? have some left. We're doing a lot of electronic In color and black so. and white. Well, I, whatever they want. Well, but, yeah. but surprisingly, people are going to want that thing in their hands. Don't underestimate the fact that they want something tangible. That's oh, tangible, absolutely. right? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. And, and, and so, but, but, you know. You know but, this population. I do. Every I do. year. I, well, I think that that's, I think that that's, I'm going to be kind of a lot of our time that we have here today, but, um, I, I thanks guys for being here Absolutely. and this is all really important stuff for our clients to continue to uh, be fed this information. And so I don't want anybody to, I, I think that there's been this big, I almost feel like there's been a shadow of there's so much marketing going on with some of these big, massive insurance companies that I almost feel like convenient resources, Bright Health still kind of still being a small company growing really fast, Dispatch still being a small brand growing really fast. And I feel like a lot of times there's so much noise that just covers up. You guys are trying to shake your trees and you guys right. are trying to shake, make noise too, right? And I think yeah. that a lot of times it just gets covered up by all the noise that's being made by the big companies. And so it was important to me that we get you guys out there and that people understand that these services are available because it is seriously Thank convenient you. what you guys yeah, do. I and so appreciate it. Um, thanks guys for being here. I appreciate it. Thank you for the invite. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, enjoyed it. Loved and it. it uh, and we'll, be, we'll be looking forward to our nachos. Nachos. Let's go get some nachos. Cool, right on. <laughs>